can hear you. Okay, there's but we two, have this ghost Aaron you. Green here. Yeah, there's two of you in the room. <laughs> so it's my other personality. Hello, and welcome to middle the podcast about moderation in all things. I am Michael Gray. And I am Erin Green. How's it going, Erin Green? Great. I always Great. wait for you to start the conversation because <laughs> you are ultra reliable on the, hey, how's your day? How's it going? Well, I'm glad I'm reliable with something. <laughs> Mr. Reliable, that is you. All reliable. That's what they called me in grade school. <sighs> Whatever that means. Was it? Were you voted Miss Most Reliable in you know what the I yearbook was. or whatever? You know what I was well, voted? What were you? Best all around. Very middle-ish of <laughs> you. <to> <laughs> so I felt like that was something you give some somebody when you want to give them something, but they don't really fit in any of the other categories. Yeah, you're I like, well, just... Mike can be best all around. Just, you know, just... You're a good guy. So let's just give you something. And well, the girl that guy. was voted that with me, I said that to her. She didn't appreciate, appreciate that very much. Oh, yeah. Well, she felt like it was kind of an honor. And I was like, no, they just don't know what to do with us. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, now that you have anyway. projected your own um, assessment onto her, yeah. I wonder if you guys are still in touch. Uh, yeah. We're, I mean, we're, we, are kind of in touch on social media, like Facebook know. friends or whatever. Yeah. 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 I'm trying to remember if I was voted most likely to do something or I don't know. I'd have to dig up my old yearbook and <laughs> read back through that. You're Obviously cool it hasn't stuck care. with me. No, I think I just wasn't nominated for anything. And so it was probably, <laughs> and there's 15 people in my graduating class. All right. So you don't need that many oh. categories to evenly distribute the accolades. So <laughs> if you came up with 15 different, you know, categories, everybody yeah. would be a winner. Yeah. I don't know if I That's was That's your participation. Something. Participation. Yeah. That's My what I just said. participation. Yeah. Were you also is. voted most likely to make up new words? <laughs> it should have been. <laughs> yeah. Participation trophy. Yeah. Participation. Yeah. So we had kind of a, an interesting night last night, Matt and I both went to bed early. Usually Matt stays up later than I do. And we always try and get rally in before nightfall, because those of you out there who are listening, he and turns have cats, into a werewolf, basically, that's awesome. And he runs from us and he plays hide and seek and he darts sure. into the bushes where we can't get him. And he just turns into this like tweaked out sketchy, like crazy feline that it's like another version of rally. Mm -hmm. So we always try to get him in before the witching hour and like we a, didn't last he's night. He's like a gremlin. After yeah, midnight. Exactly. <laughs> Don't feed him after midnight. Don't do it. Don't do it. <laughs> and so the little gremlin stayed out later and oh he made it in. We can set the cat door so that he can enter the house, but not exit the house. So whenever mm -hmm. this happens, we just set the cat door and whatever. And I come out this morning and the little punk got into a fight with our neighbor's cat, I'm sure, oh. and had tufts of fur, like just all over missing. And he just, ugh, it's such a headache because with cats, if they get into a fight and they have an owie and then the mm -hmm. owie closes and then they get an abscess and it's like this whole rigmarole. And we've been down this road with him numerous times and his fur is so thick that you can't find if he has a wound. Mm. And so then it's just like three or four or a week later, three or four days or a week, all of a sudden there's, he's limping or there's something anyway. So I'm, yeah. that was our, that was our fun night. And this morning, exciting. Excited Little does stuff. he know he's not going outside yeah. <laughs> after next week. So I hope you got it out of your system, buddy. Yeah, for real, huh? Oh man. Yeah. Well, we we started school here yesterday, so mm. I was off to fifth grade, which is wild. Oh my goodness. Yeah, and then Sophie starts preschool in like a week and a half. So oh wow. We're entering a very new phase where both yes. kids are in school, and that's just kind of. Uh, it's weird. 
It's like, yeah. it's, it's weird when you see those transitions, like as a family coming, you know, like, yeah. oh, this is a new thing that yeah. we're going to be entering into. And here we go. Well, and then there's juggling two schedules with activities and mm-hmm. school drop-offs and pickups and yeah, all of that. So yeah. Cause Lila oh gets dropped off about a little before eight and then Sophie's a little before nine. So it's like this weird kind of hour gap, you yeah. know, there, and, but Sophie's only twice a week too. So yeah. Yeah. Interesting. <sighs> Very good. <laughs> I know. I can't believe school year is here already. You know, I work with a lot of teens and I, I've been having the conversations about school and what that looks like and meal yeah. planning and all this stuff, which segues into our topic today. So you know what? It does. It does. Isn't it that really clever? does. Look at you. You are, you are good with the segues. I'll admit. Maybe that should have been my high school category. Most likely to come up with great segues. <laughs> right. You're the segwayer. I'm the segwayer. Yeah. Mine are I'm like seg- segwayista. My, I go from like talking about like, you know, wetting, <laughs> wetting my pants to self-love or we, something like yes we did I well i mean <laughs> sometimes self-love is wetting your pants because it's such a relief <laughs> man if i had a dollar for every time i've said that oh my goodness <sighs> well and you're also the king of tangents or slight slight side tangent or whatever flights being pretty kind that right. was very you say nice that a you. lot so this is a slight deviation or this is just a slight side note or something and then the she like way over there so. <laughs> Speaking of which, no, I'm just kidding. Yes. Yeah. I'm just, yes. No, Do you have something? Dr- no, I mean, probably, but no. <laughs> you will have something. I think that's sure I will. the point. That, that was a preemptive right. alert. <laughs> so in the spirit of school starting and some of the conversations I've had lately with clients and just some of the things Michael and I have talked about this numerous times on the podcast, but I think it's worth have, devoting an entire episode to mm-hmm. the unglamorous side of meal planning and meal prep. And I think the bottom line with all of this is that we hear and see things in our food world, the social media, maybe we hear from friends, maybe you see other parents that are perfectly curating these little snacks and lunches for their kids. Mm-hmm. And we feel like there's a certain way right. for meal planning or meal prep, or yep. y'all are asking Michael and I to just give you a menu plan right, or something, give you a meal right. plan. Right. So there there's this assumption that there's a right way to do it and that you're doing it wrong. If you don't follow all these other, you know, rules that are set forth. And we are here to tell you that there are lots of ways to be successful with menu planning, with meal planning, with putting it all together for your family and yourself. So that's what we're talking about today. That's what we're talking about. And like, like everything we talk about, like meal planning is a broad umbrella and it can look like a bunch of different things. And again, this is, I think this is a, a topic that a lot of people approach as like, oh, it's this specific thing. And so I need to make that specific thing fit into my life versus it can, and we're going to talk about a bunch of different ways this can look. Um, but how, what, how do I meal plan with, with my schedule and my preferences and, you know, whatever my history with doing this and that kind of stuff so that it fits in my life versus the other way around. You know, and I think when people, when, when people talk about meal planning or, you know, we talk with clients about meal planning, there's often this assumption of like the, the Instagram post, right. Where it's the countertop with like 20 different Tupperwares and everything's lined out for the next week and your foods are pre-made. And in, you know, six days, you're going to be eating six day old chicken that tastes like rubber and veggies that were steamed <laughs> six days ago that just fall apart in your mouth. Cause there's no substance left. Of, you know, that's kind of like oh, the yes. image I think that most people get is this like very elaborate, complicated. I spent six hours on Sunday getting my meals ready for the week kind of thing. Mm-hmm. And I think that's one small part or one, one way of doing meal planning. It's also the, the way of doing meal planning that I have clients do the least if ever, like pretty much never. Um, right. Because I think that's, it's, that's a real extreme way to live. You know, mm-hmm. I, I think you tend to see that from people who, uh, maybe live more extremely like bodybuilders or figure athletes, that kind of stuff where everything is very controlled, everything very planned out, you know, that kind of stuff. And 
for most of us, um, we don't need to, and probably can't live with those kind of extreme restrictions and parameters, you know? Yep. Exactly. And I'm glad that you brought up that there are some populations that thrive or even prioritize food in such a way and that planning and that precision Mm -hmm. that comes into their food world. Mm -hmm. Um, I think it's really important to be clear on why we're being so precise and so rigid with meal planning. If, if you are that person that has to weigh and measure everything that has to have everything perfectly put together and planned out, um, there's definitely some things to investigate there. Is it your inability to be flexible with eating? Is it rules that you've created for yourself? Or is there an actual reason why I'm doing this thing? And maybe it's a means to an end. Maybe it is for an, I mean, Olympians are a fraction of the percent of people and even a very, very small percentage of elite athletes. So if we talk about Olympians doing that kind of thing, the vast majority of people can just set that aside and say, that's not for me. Exactly. Because a lot of Olympians, like I was reading just the other day, Lindsay Vaughn has her personal chef in tow when she goes and travels around to these, you know, so, okay, that works great. Like she can basically just say what she wants every day. And, you know, so Mm -hmm. most of us don't live in that world. And so it's really important to make meal planning flexible and doable and enjoyable for you. And sustainable. Yeah. Uh, so I think, I think part of the problem too, is that, you know, we, we see like on social media and stuff, we see these elite people and what they're doing. And we assume that that's what we need to do too. Right. Mm-hmm. And so there's, there's this, like, I think it goes to both ways, but we see like, oh, wow, look at that physique or that athleticism. I'd like to be like that. And so maybe I should do the things they're doing. Right. Mm-hmm. And then we also have elite people (laughs) giving advice that they maybe shouldn't be giving to not elite people like myself. Right. Right. Like if you're listening, you're, you're probably not an elite athlete. There's a really, really good chance. And that's not a criticism. That is just a fact of reality. And if you're not operating at elite level, you don't need to be engaging in elite things, Mm -hmm. you know? Um, and we've talked about this before. There's there's a downside to that elite stuff and living in that extreme. It really messes with a lot of people's heads and yeah. they may look super healthy and that kind of stuff, but they may be a mess mentally, right? This is not uncommon at all. And so it's just important to remember, like, am I doing elite things? No. Okay. <laughs> then I don't need to do elite things, right? <laughs> like if you're not eating a vegetable yeah. on a regular basis, you don't need to be like prepping meals in a way that are lined out for seven days and down to the specific macro and cal like this is bonkers. Yeah. It's ridiculous. But I understand why people have that assumption with meal planning. Cause there is, I think a, there's a message out there that like, this is what you need to do. And it's beneficial, that extreme thing in some ways, uh, it's mm-hmm. also a huge pain in the ass and right. completely unnecessary. Yeah. And just <laughs> speaking from an elite athlete's experience with mm-hmm. this and a total nutrition nerd, because I'm a dietitian, I went through the, the process of, Oh, I need to do this special thing because now I'm a pro and I need to, you know, eat a certain way and, and be a pro in all these areas. And I found that it was unsustainable to be that just rigid and calculated, even as a, I'm a professional foodie. (laughs) And even with all the training and experience I have, it was still really, really challenging for me to keep that up. So even I came to this very relaxed place where I knew what kinds of nutrients I could have at different times. I shouldn't say I could have that. I should have at different times, like to fuel my body properly and what felt good to me and what worked well with my body. Mm -hmm. And I also planned ahead which is a big part of what we're going to talk about, because that is right. honestly the first thing I talk with people about when I'm talking, when they say, I need to, I need help with menu planning or meal planning, or I need, I need some guidance with this. Can you help me? Yes. What, the first thing we talk about is what's your schedule? Like walk mm-hmm. me through a typical day and week with relation to when you wake up, when you go to bed, what's your training like? What are the job requirements? When do you pick up kids or have, you know, specific extracurricular mm-hmm. activities, all of this stuff. 
let's create the skeletal structure of your week. And some people have just completely crazy, unpredictable schedules. Okay. We can, you know, deal with that. But most people have, again, we're not talking about like, I mean, even the most elite athletes have a predictable schedule. In fact, that is what helps them get to that level. Yeah. But you at least have an idea of, oh yeah, you know, I have to get up at six and I have a, you know, 30 minute commute and I try and get a workout in the morning and, you know, we'll kind of walk through just the skeletal structure of your time frame of your day mm-hmm. and your week. And then we start doing the work of plugging in eating right. opportunities yeah. throughout like that. And I think, you know, <clears throat> what's important about that and, and other ways to do it versus like just a, Hey, here's your meal plan. Now go execute it. Right. Right. Is like, and you know, we've talked about this before, but like, if, if you're just given a meal plan and told to execute it, well, there's a, there's a lot of potential problems right from the start, right? Like preferences, like schedule, like time, you know, that Mm -hmm. kind of stuff, but also like that doesn't teach you anything. It's the same concept as like, uh, you know, um, like meal replacement shakes, you know what I mean? Where just eat this thing three times a day and then you'll be fine. Well, it doesn't, it doesn't teach you anything about like how to schedule this stuff, how to make these things fit in your day. How, I mean, there's no tools learned. It's just, you're just following orders sort of. Right. And And how enjoyable is that? Just drinking your nutrients (laughs) or even just like, I mean, even having someone else decide what you're going to eat sounds like a pretty unenjoyable experience, Yeah, you know? Um, and and I think it's, it's, it's really important that as we, if we're going to settle into like deeper places of taking care of ourselves, a massive part of that is understanding ourselves better. And mm-hmm. we understand ourselves better by like learning about ourselves. Right. And I think this is why traditional approaches with, with, you know, meal planning, nutrition, fitness, that kind of stuff completely fall apart is because we don't learn anything. We're just trying yeah. to just, just, you know, cross things off the list, check the boxes. Like, okay, I did this and this and this, am I healthy now? And it's like, man, if that's going like outward and trying to make it like yeah. get in and it just yeah. doesn't do that, you know, but versus, versus if like Aaron's talking about, like, if, you know, we sit down with the client and like, Hey, let's, let's look at your week. Let's pick apart your week and let's, let's strategize. Well, as you're doing that with them, they're learning how to do this. They're a part mm-hmm. of the process. Like, oh yeah. Okay. You know what? It, it is really helpful. Like every Wednesday night's busy. And so just making like a double batch of dinner on Tuesday. So we just have leftovers. Yes. Whoa, that's a game changer. Exactly. You know, I oh, have yeah, mornings are rushed. And so just like, Hey, you know, scrambling a couple eggs and putting them in the fridge and putting the frying pan on the stove the night before. So I can just throw it into the morning. That makes my morning go really easy. And so we're learning these things about ourselves um, with, with help and guidance versus just Mm -hmm. like, do this, do this. And then we're done working together. Good luck. (laughs) Well, and I think it's funny that you said, you know, for you, it sounds less enjoyable to have someone just decide what, what you're going to eat every day. I have people actually request that. Sure. They say, I don't want to decide. I don't want to think about it. I just want you to tell me what to eat. Mm -hmm. And I always find that really sad when I hear that, because I'm like, Whoa, okay. First of all, that's a valid feeling because Mm. it's quite obvious that you're viewing this as a burden or a chore or something that you don't enjoy doing. And that gives you, um, no fulfillment and that you're probably not very confident in doing yourself. Mm -hmm. If you're uncomfortable in that space, that's a pretty good indication that we need to work on that space. So if you're not wanting to decide how to fuel yourself and what kind of nourishment to put in your body, and you just want somebody to like give it to you and tick that box. That's a pretty good indication that we need to work on that a little bit more and find a way for you to feel more confident. And not everybody is on board with that. They want Mm -hmm. that meal plan just sent to them. But then what do we see happens? Mm -hmm. I have multiple clients that come to me and say, I was given this meal plan and it was too rigid. I got bored with the food. It was the same thing over and over Over the chicken, broccoli, rice, or chicken, broccoli, sweet potato combination. I don't have any idea why (laughs) that is a thing. It's I know. Uh And then, and then people will come to me and they'll say, well, I did this for a while and, or I counted my macros for a while. We 
talked about this on our macro episode. Yeah. I did this for a while and now I'm not doing it anymore. And I'm always curious, why wasn't it sustainable? Right. And a lot of times it was, they, you know, they want more out of the experience. People right. do want to learn how to cook a little better. People do want to have control over different flavors and textures of their food and, you know, having some freedom and flexibility. So teaching people these tools of how to kind of do some menu planning themselves and how to be flexible with that is really yeah. critical for sustainability. Yeah. And I, and I think often the answer to that question of like, why weren't they able to sustain is because it sucked. Yeah. Yeah. It's like too it's, rigid and it just sucked boring, you know, mm -hmm. like it was foods I didn't like, it was too much of the same thing, you know, whatever. And I mean, if you're going to get healthier, if you're, if you're looking to improve your health and your way forward sucks, like what, what are you doing? Yeah. Not a lot like, of incentive I'm, to stick with it. Yeah. But it's funny how like, like intertwined those things are in our mm -hmm. heads, you know, like okay, I want to get healthier. So I'm just going to have to do a lot of miserable things, things I don't enjoy. And it's like, so you're going to take better care of yourself by hating everything. And being angry and resentful because yeah. you're forced and to miserable do and bored and just like, see yeah. like, what are the limits of your, like your, your will and like your ability to white knuckle. Like this makes, makes zero sense. Yeah. You know, yeah. Like, like zero sense. Yeah. Um, go ahead. If you, I had a thought and I lost it, but go well, ahead so others. I was going to go with, you know, along the line of going through the schedule and looking at the, the week, the each day, mm -hmm. um, especially with athletes, because that's the majority of the population I work with, but I do mm -hmm. have several non-athletes too, in my clientele and people that I've helped along the way I've helped teenagers. So we talk about the school schedule, yeah. you know, do you eat lunch at school? When do you have opportunities to eat all that stuff? And mm -hmm. then I look at what kinds of physical activity do you have that needs to be supported with nutrition? Mm -hmm. And we, I mean, let's kind of assume that that typical meal snack structure of, you know, breakfast, and then maybe a mid morning snack and then lunch, and then maybe a mid afternoon snack or that kind of structure mm -hmm. is usually pretty helpful for people. Although this is where there's no right or wrong way to do it. Right. In fact, I'm, I called it eating opportunities earlier because sometimes when you use the word meal or snack, people have completely, you know, preconceived notions of what that looks like or what kinds of foods that is, or what quantity that is. And so I'm more likely to say, well, you know, you've got this big gap here between when you first eat in the morning to where you're not able to eat lunch usually until like 1 PM, mm -hmm. you know, sometimes that's a six hour gap. Yeah. That's a long time to go without food, especially if someone has a workout in that span or they just had a morning workout. So they're probably running low or whatever. So we'll mm -hmm. kind of look at the time frame between those meals mm -hmm. or between those eating opportunities and start plugging in well, it would probably be great to have a little something here, right. you know, and you take right. into context is that pre-workout. So it maybe needs to be lighter and well-tolerated and maybe, mm -hmm. you know, a certain type of food, maybe higher carbohydrate, lower fiber, that sort of thing. Or is it, you know, post-workout or do you have enough time to digest a very complex meal that has mm -hmm. fiber and fat and protein and all these other things in it? So that's my basic approach is starting yeah. to go through like, putting together the foods that support your day and also asking the person, how is your energy level? What's your mm -hmm. hunger like throughout the day? When do you, you know, do you notice any times a day that you're hungrier than others? All of that stuff is not something you can get by just downloading a quote meal plan off the right. internet. Right. Cause that's in no way specific to you at all. Mm -hmm. yep. <laughs> and it's, yeah. And, and, and you, you brought up like indirectly, I think a really good point is that when we talk about meal planning, we're talking about just like how you're going to eat through the week, mm -hmm. right? Like, like where, where snacks will go and that kind of stuff, because, you know, it's important. It's important. I mean, it's, it's not uncommon for someone to be like, okay, yeah, my lunch break is at noon and then I'm not home from work till six. Mm -hmm. And then when I get home, I'm starving because I haven't eaten for six hours. Mm -hmm. And so either I'm grabbing something on the way home because I'm so hungry 
and I want to eat during my commute, or I get home and I'm cracking open the pantry as I'm trying to decide what to make and I'm eating all this other stuff, you know? And, and so if we can look at like, like Aaron's saying, like how, how will we plan when and where and, and why to eat in the week? It's not just like this rigid, okay, here's what you're going to eat. It's like, Hey, how do we make, how do we uh, maximize planning for us and our goals and what we're wanting to do, you know? Mm -hmm. And so it, it, it includes snacks it includes timing and that kind of stuff. Now, all that being said, I think it could be easy for someone to be listening to this and feel very overwhelmed. Yeah. Um, like, look, you know, look, totally. Oh, God, it's a lot of work. My meals and all my snacks. Mm -hmm. da, da, da. No, you don't, not yet. Right. Like, I think some people are, are, are there. Some people aren't. I honestly have some clients where we're planning like one meal a week right now. Cause that right. feels, that feels doable. Hey, you know what? If I can, if I can just like on a regular basis, get into a rhythm of on the weekends, let's plan one meal. Let's make sure it's, you know, it's lean protein and veggie heavy or whatever, you know, um, that kind of thing. Awesome. Because the more, the better we get at that, then it's easier to do a second or third or fourth meal. Right. Mm -hmm. Or maybe we just need to look at specific meals in the day, like breakfast and lunch. I'm fine. I come home for dinner and it's a disaster you know, okay, let's, let's look at ways that we can plan for those meals, the meal plan to, to go better and to help set you up for success, you know, things like that. So we're talking about a lot of stuff. That doesn't mean we have to tackle all this stuff right at the gate, but you know, by any means. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. And that's where it's really important to have that conversation with mm -hmm. the person and, and ask most people know what areas of their day or what days of the week or whatever, most people know what parts need attention. Yeah. Like I eat really well for breakfast and lunch because it's plant. Like I have to be at work at a certain time. I have lunch at a certain time, whatever. And so they have mm -hmm. this sort of, um, you know, I guess, pre-planned like schedule and, and sort of structure to their day. Yeah. And then dinner, it all falls apart because I have that evening workout or I'm part of this committee or I'm running around with kids. And then we don't plan anything and we hit the drive through or we're whatever. Mm -hmm. So something you have talked about before, which I really like is if you know that a certain day of the week is crazy for, for you guys, then plan for that to be a drive through night or plan yep. for that to be I call it freezer night. Just mm. get a frozen pizza or something or some frozen, yep. whatever entree out of the freezer. Guess what? Veggies can be kept in the freezer too, y'all. So mm. there's no excuse to not have a vegetable with that meal. Mm. So if you can part of this, and you said something before we started recording today that I'm going to repeat and take credit for it because it's really clever. Ooh, that's scary. Is that part of meal <laughs> planning a lot of things. <laughs> is simply thinking about it, even if you're yeah. just mentally planning and just yeah. thinking about your week ahead and thinking about your day ahead and, you know, sort of how this could play out, that is still a huge step in the right direction mm -hmm. because yeah. you, I mean, you've already, part of the issue is the decision-making in the moment mm -hmm. and that feeling of being overwhelmed because, oh my gosh, I have to make this decision. And then how am I going to do that? And then how am I going to put this together? And I don't have time to do that. And I don't have the ingredients for this. Blah. And then a lot of yep. people flip the switch and they're like, piss on it. I'm going to go get, you know, something yep. at a restaurant or I'm going to whatever. Yeah. So, yeah. and, and, and I like that point you made is that, you know, it, it can absolutely, a, a strong meal plan can absolutely have like, Hey, on Wednesday night, we're grabbing McDonald's. That can be a, 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 a part of a healthy and strong meal plan. Mm -hmm. Because when we plan for these kind of things, that's a whole different experience. than just like, ah, screw it. I don't have to, I don't know what to do. Let's just do this. Mm -hmm. Right. It's there's, because we're looking at the week still, we're making the, we're, we're practicing making the decisions that we feel are the best for our days. We are, uh, we're, 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 there's mindfulness and awareness going into that. Like it's, it's just a whole different experience. Right. And sometimes guess what? I, I think that's the best choice. You know, if it, if it fits in your week, if it, um, if it's, you know, crazy evenings and you're going from late work to practice and just whatever, like, is it healthier and whole picture sense to like stress out about like maybe missing a healthier meal once in the week, or mm -hmm. is it not a big deal to just go like, okay, let me, let me just put some thought into this. I've, 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 um, 
plan for it. Like it's Mm -hmm. put it in my schedule, right? Like this is just a whole different experience. And I think it can absolutely, um, a strong, solid, healthy meal plan can include things like that. Yeah. Yeah. And it reinforces what we're hoping to get out of this Mm -hmm. entire process, which is a different attitude toward planning your food and your meals and that feeling of, I can do that, boosting your confidence a little bit, Mm -hmm. learning some skills and learning this is how I do it and works for my family versus if you're caught off guard and you decide that I'm, you know, going to make this spontaneous screw it decision. I'll just do this instead. That then reinforces that this is just too hard. It's a burden. It's a pain in the ass and Mm -hmm. you're, you're suck at it. And so you're not going to do it. Right. And I had, I had a conversation with a client just last week that she's training for an Ironman. She's in a high powered demanding job. She's got family. She's got activities. She's got a ton of training to do. And she just was struggling with eating out literally every night because that was what her day dished up. Mm-hmm. And we had, it was very clear that she wanted to change this. So this wasn't something I was telling you need to change. This was something she was telling me, like, this is not working. So we had this conversation about, well, what are the pieces that are falling apart? What are the barriers to you actually reaching where you want to be? And one of the big ones was just getting the food. She did not have time to get to the grocery store. So then we start talking about, well, grocery delivery or like the pickup curbside pickup options and how to put that together. And just really talking through, you don't have to come up with this recipe from scratch with all these ingredients and herbs and chopping and prep and time involved. Just get some food, get some ready-made items, get some frozen items, get some bagged salad mixes or like Mm -hmm. steamable veggie packets or whatever it is, some jarred marinade sauces that you just throw in a slow cooker with something Mm -hmm. like anything to make it super easy, but let's just get the food in the house. Yeah. And she has noticed, I, I got a follow-up from her just this morning, actually, where she's like, okay, you know, there was this hiccup with the grocery delivery. So we learned something there. There was something that happened that, um, didn't quite work out, but she learned for next time. Mm -hmm. got the food in the house. And she's like, Whoa, I can tell a total difference with my snacking behaviors, with the things I take with me, because I have these fresh items here at Mm -hmm. my home and ready to take. Um, I've made a couple meals that just have extra leftovers. And so I can actually eat something here at home. She got done training at after nine o'clock last night, and she's got to get up and get to work in the morning. And so she, instead of ordering food, which would have taken so much longer, putting her to bed later and then precipitating this whole cycle. Mm -hmm. She had food in her home that she could actually eat on the spot. It took like 10 or 15 minutes to just prepare, like boil some pasta, you know, whatever she had. And she, she was like, it was all from the freezer, but I was able to do this. And I was like, yes, this is exactly what we're talking about. You don't have to hit this gold star, you know, Mm -hmm. like hit it out of the ballpark sort of meal prep and planning just make it doable and start taking the steps in that direction. And like you said, one, one meal a week, if that's what it takes, or just yep. focusing on what you take to work for snacks or yeah. any of that stuff can make a difference. Yeah. Because there's no, there's no wrong way to do quote unquote better. Right. Yeah. Like, like we think there's the specific heart that's like, no, there's a million ways we can do better. And if we're doing mm-hmm. better, we're doing better. And that's great. That's, that's everything. Like, it doesn't matter how fast or how far better is better. And that's it. That's the end of it. You know? Mm -hmm. So if things feel better, great. You're headed in the right direction. You're doing the right stuff, you know? And, and I think there's, you know, when, when, when we come to like thinking about like meal planning and just being mindful of the week ahead, like, I think too often we undervalue, um, let's see, how do I say this? maybe how we're, how we're doing something and overvalue, like what we did, like, like someone might say, you know, if we plan for like to hit McDonald's on the way home or whatever, well, then all of the emphasis is on the McDonald's, right? Right. Like it's a fast food thing. So it's not healthy. Like that's just the end of it. But what we don't understand a lot is that if we have, like, if we've put in, uh, forethought, and prepared and mindfulness and that kind of stuff, 
strengthening those muscles of being mindful and preparing and that kind of stuff plays out into everything, mm-hmm. you know? And so it's not so much just about the result, but it's what we put into the result that really can like, uh, move us down the line. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Because if I'm, if I'm mindful about my week and that includes grabbing fast food somewhere, well, sure. Okay. Maybe fast food isn't the healthiest thing as far as nutrient, you know, density. Okay. But I I'm practicing being mindful. I'm practicing executing my plan. I'm practicing looking at the week ahead. And mm-hmm. yeah, these are all great things that, that play out into everything else you're going to do. Right. Right. You know? The process is just as important as the actual, you know, activity itself and, yeah. and what you're doing. Mm-hmm. I and mean, the process is <clears throat> yeah. Wildly yeah. important. <laughs> yeah. And so another thing I, I think people sort of fall prey to is they'll, they'll sort of get caught up in the, what should I be doing? Well, if I'm not eating home cooked meals, then I'm failing. And so I'm just not even going to attempt any of this. Mm -hmm. So that's a really tough thing to coach people through sometimes, especially if they have that very type a kind of personality where they want to, you know, just go from here to here, and this is perfection. And this is where I am now. And I want to get here. And you're just like, Hey, how, how (laughs) can you take a step toward that direction? And how can you look at this in the context of your life? Not what everybody else is doing. Okay. So maybe because of your schedule, maybe you actually have, you know, sort of a too many meals in your morning instead of just like a full breakfast because of whatever Mm -hmm. is going on. I've worked with people in that sense, you know, maybe they I've, I've had people say, I'm just, I'm really not hungry. I'm actually kind of nauseated in the morning and it's hard to Mm -hmm. have them sit down and eat a substantial, like, you know, 500 calorie meal or whatever. So, okay, we're going to split that into two eating opportunities and we're going to pick the right kinds of foods to balance it out and things that you like and things that are available to you. And we'll work that in. I have teenagers that, um, you know, the last meal they eat is lunch and then they go straight to practice and they're kind of like, well, I can't eat in class because of the mask thing. And I don't know what to take with me and I don't have enough time and all of these things. And so then it's coming up with something really, really easy. And with teenagers, it's only nutrition. If you're eating it (laughs) with anybody, (laughs) it's only nutrition if you eat it. So with teenagers, it's really, really important to get them to eat some foods that you know, they will like, and they're likely to eat PB and J's a granola bar, you know, little fruit cups. I mean, whatever you can get creative with it. Mm -hmm. So again, it's, it's sort of looking at what is happening with this person's schedule and this individual's needs. And then let's get creative with, we don't have to label these meals or snacks or any of that Mm -hmm. stuff. Let's just kind of find some ways to get some nutrition in the day. Yeah. hundred percent, hundred percent agree. What, um, what do you have any like sort of favorite uh, well, tricks or I want to say hacks or I hate approaches, but you know what I mean? Just things that you feel like, yeah, yeah the, the, this has been really helpful in mm-hmm. broad terms with, you know, a lot of people to help them just either, you know, meal plan for the week better, execute certain times of the day, that yep. kind of stuff. Yeah. So I, my simplest, um, sort of foundation for this is for each meal, meaning a larger amount of food that's not close to a workout and that you actually have time to eat, Mm -hmm. get at least three different kinds of food groups and include a fruit or vegetable. Okay. So this is kind of the standard, like, you know, protein, starch, veggie sort of combination, Mm -hmm. but because you have control over what food groups you choose and what foods you put together, you can put together whatever you want. It -hmm. might be a combination food, like some leftover enchiladas. It could be like some, you know, flatbread pizza and a salad or something. I mean, it could be anything taking whiskey and gummy bears. Those aren't food groups. Those aren't, aren't food groups. Excuse me. Maybe we need to have a nutrition one-on-one class. I don't care for the way you're speaking to me right now. (laughs) It's going to be honest with you. This is like sacrilege. (laughs) So if you take that food group approach, I will tell you that I have gotten very creative with some of the things I put together because 
we all know that Aaron likes using up leftovers and doesn't like to waste food. So I will take like, okay, there's leftover salad from the night before and, oh, I don't have protein handy. And so I'll cook a couple eggs or I'll have some cheese with crackers on that. And, you know, maybe a glass of milk for extra protein, or maybe I don't have a vegetable ready. And so I'll just eat some baby carrots alongside this leftover pizza that I have or whatever. I mean, really like I just start thinking of food groups and how to put this together and it's food I like, and it's appealing enough and it's filling. So then for snacks, similar kind of thing, pick at least two kinds of food because foods work better together. When you pair different foods together, the nutrients in them tend to complement each other. They tend to be more filling, more satisfying. A lot of people enjoy combinations versus just plain foods. Mm -hmm. Um, it does take a little bit of kind of planning, you know, what goes with what and how will I put this together? But I'm talking simple things like peanut butter and apple slices or, you know, trail mix or whiskey and gummy bears and crackers, (laughs) whiskey and gummy bears. I feel like you're just supporting my, my opinion here. (laughs) Theory, I know I, I was going to say that next whiskey and gummy bears. (laughs) You beat me to it. Sorry, but putting those, you know, just putting foods together, choose a fruit or vegetable every time you eat, because we do need five or more servings a day. And so if you're eating a fruit or vegetable, every time you eat, you're much more likely to meet those requirements. Okay. And then eating probably, I mean, for most athletes and most teenagers, I'll say eat every two to three hours, because that is usually what people need to meet their needs. But for some people, it's don't go more than four hours without eating, or at Mm -hmm. least assess your hunger every so often. And I mean, take a break, tune in with yourself, check your body cues. How am I feeling? Am I having difficulty concentrating on work? Do you know, is my stomach talking to me, all those things. That is how I determine kind of the frequency of of meals. And we're not going to get into the intermittent fasting discussion because that's for another time, but I am definitely a proponent of eating more frequently versus going longer between eating. Yeah. Yeah. I like, um, I, I often have people do the, you know, every time you eat, get a fruit or a vegetable. Mm -hmm. Um, I think that's a really strong approach, especially if, you know, someone's really needing to increase their fruit and veggie consumption. I also honestly, one of my favorite things for, especially for like families is, is the leftover. Oh, huge. You know what I mean? Yes. I mean, honestly, we, we do it every single week. We just, we, every meal we plan, we make sure we have enough so that the next night we're Mm -hmm. not cooking. We're just having leftovers. And so, you know, we can, we can cook three nights a week, have home, cook meals the other three nights a week. And then we can call an audible, you know, maybe we go out and get something. Maybe we, you know, pick up some tacos or <clears throat> it's a pizza and movie night, you know, that kind of thing if we want, but to have that, I mean, it's, it's been such a game changer once we started doing it, especially on those busy evenings. Mm-hmm. Cause if we know, you know, Tuesday is crazy. Well, Monday we cook Tuesday. All we're doing is heating stuff up, Yeah, you know, and it's less to decide less to figure out. Cause we're, you know, we're not doing seven meals, you know, mm-hmm. um, it's, it's less prep because it, I mean, to make a double batch of something is way less work than cooking two totally different meals, Yes, you know, yes. and it's, it, uh, it's something I have a lot of clients do, um, mm-hmm. just because it, it, man, it changes so much, you know, and, and it can really increase the amount of just like, uh, home prepared, high veggie, you know, yes, uh, lean protein meals that, that happen in the course of a week. It's, it's one of my favorite things to have people do because it can, really can be a game changer. Well, and I love the, just one of my favorite sayings is, you know what we used to call food prep when I was a kid <laughs> leftovers mm-hmm. because this whole like curated bento box meal, that's all pretty and fresh <laughs> and perfectly, you know, Pinterest ready is just so annoying to me. Like I reheat yeah, leftovers obnoxious. and eat leftovers all the time and just call them leftovers. I mean, call it meal prep if you want, yeah. but it really can be that simple. There are a lot of recipes that yield even for a family of four, um, that yield larger quantities. In fact, we had a couple of friends staying with us a, a few weeks ago 
and I was making these huge batches of like lentils and curry and different things so that we would have some leftovers in the fridge. And with four athletes, four adult athletes in one household, we still had plenty of leftovers. So it can be done. You just have to, again, have a little bit of forethought to say, this is a good idea for me to just put a little bit extra into this meal, because as you pointed out, it will take far less time actually to make a double batch, you know, this time, this one time versus making a whole nother meal the next night and the next Mm -hmm. night. Plus one of the other. Th- oh, go oh, ahead. Sorry. I was gonna say. Plus, some things get better as they sit. Like I agree. Soups or chilies or like lasagna. And, yes. They sit overnight or yeah. maybe a night or two, and mm, they're getting it's, real good. Yes, I <laughs> totally agree with you. In fact, Matt and I talk about that when I make, especially like a curry or a lentil or yeah. bean dish or something. He's like, "Oh, this is gonna be so good for lunches t- mm-hmm. <laughs> this week," and so. Um, one of the other things, you know, people, we talk about variety a lot in the nutrition world and getting a variety of things. And some people I've seen sort of two extremes with this. Some people think, Oh, variety. So I shouldn't eat the same thing over and over again, or it's, you know, I need to make something from scratch each time or change it up each time. And then other people are like, no, no, I just, I make the same thing for all five days of the week. And it's exactly the same every day. Well, there's a middle-ish concept to be, (laughs) to be, um, realized here. One is that we know that variety is important to, again, like I talk about puzzle pieces, you know, foods are kind of like puzzle pieces where they have different shapes and they interlock together and help each other out to build the total nutrition puzzle, right? So if you're eating the same puzzle pieces over and over and over again, you're not likely to get all of that interlocking nutrition puzzle going on. And then it's also helpful to make things simple enough. So repeating certain things is not a bad idea either. There are ways that you can introduce variety without requiring that you make something fresh each time or that you, you know, are constantly thinking of new things to make. And one of the things I was working with a teenager last week, who's returning to school, she returned to school on Monday and we were talking about breakfast and lunches. Like what, what kinds of things are easy for you? What do you like to do and eat? And one of the barriers was with leftovers was she didn't really have access to a microwave to reheat it. And she didn't really like eating cold leftovers. Like there's very few cold leftovers that she really liked. So then we were trying to come up with options of, okay, what can you pack with you that is appealing and that doesn't have to be reheated and all this stuff. And she kind of threw out, well, I like PB and J's I'll eat those, you know, every day if I want. And I'm like, sweet. So do a PB and J with an apple and a bag of chips or something, and a little thing of milk, maybe two or three days out of your school week. So Mm. that's two or three days. That's over half your week. That's accounted for and done. Done and easy. Yeah. And then let's throw in a couple other items on the other days, which might be a leftover dish that actually appeals to you cold, or it might be, maybe you do go out with your friends that lunch and you do, you know, go get some food somewhere. So there's ways to make this flexible. So you're getting sort of that predictability of like, okay, yeah, you're having PB and J three days a week, but Mm -hmm. it's far better than skipping lunch altogether or relying on eating out all the time. And it teaches you that kind of repeatable, like, oh, I've got this thing in my arsenal now that I know that is a fallback. So even if you have a week that goes bonkers and you have to do that five days out of the week, that's still you know, that's still a good approach as long as you have that, you know, that, um, that kind of option in your arsenal. So, yeah. And that's why it's so important to, to, to make this individualized. It's like you're saying to have, like, we need more skills and tools and weapons in our arsenal, right? Like, (laughs) like we, we need to really adopt these and take ownership of them so we can do them well. And if we don't learn about how to do this, we just check the boxes, then we don't have any of these skills. Mm -hmm. We don't have any of this stuff that, that then we can use in other ways. Right. Because Mm -hmm. I mean, a skill is often like we can use it in a variety of ways. It's not just the way we learned it, but, um, yeah, it's, it's that having a, a broader arsenal, right. A a broader repertoire of school uh, schools, skills and, and tools and that kind of stuff. And, and when we really take ownership of those and we really learn how to use those and, and apply those, 
now we're now we're getting now we're getting somewhere you mm-hmm. know now we're making some ground as far as like really being able to take care, better care of ourselves and you know deeper self care and that kind of stuff yeah um yeah so um oh, shoot i am losing all my thoughts today i feel like i say this about every other oh, episode did it zoom did it phew, go out of your head no it did i thought well, i was going to remember it before i said that last thing it might it might come back to you. Usually if I start talking again, you'll be like, I remember what I was going to say. Yeah. So one of the other tips I tell people about meal planning and menu planning is to cut corners where you mm-hmm. can, especially if you're time crunch. Some people love to cook. They have, they relaxed in the kitchen. They love it. Those are usually not the people that seek out my help. So, <laughs> I mean, occasionally they are, but very yeah. rarely. So if you're that person that loves to get in the kitchen, I mean, go for it, you know, take these ideas that Michael and I've talked about and like Mm -hmm. find some fun recipes and some things that you can make in batches and that you can get creative with. But many people are not, they're so time crunched. They don't like being in the kitchen, whatever it's seen as a chore. So let's take some of the chore work out of it. Maybe you can get pre-washed, cut, peeled, prepared, fruits and vegetables. I mean, that's always, I think one of the barriers is that fruits and vegetables tend to take prep work. You've got to wash Mm -hmm. them, peel them, chop them up, cook them, whatever. So take some of that prep work out. It costs more. Okay. So be aware that your, your budget for food is going to be impacted by Mm -hmm. the convenience of the food. And that's where I think when people say, Oh, eating healthy is more expensive. Well, usually it's a balance between cost and time yeah. involved is, yeah. is usually, I mean, yes, the calories are cheap. Nutrition is not as cheap. I get that. But when mm-hmm. we talk about like putting meals together, you really can get like canned and frozen fruits and vegetables for a pretty inexpensive, you know, or you can get like a bag of potatoes or a bag of apples or something, but you yeah. have to do the prep work with those items, yeah. you know? So there's, there's just trade-offs to that kind of stuff. So be aware of that. And if you are looking for kind of a happy medium, because I don't have the time to put in all of this prep work, then just know, okay, it might cost a little more to get like, you know, the bag salad mixes or the single Mm -hmm. serve of this or whatever. But if it makes it easier for you to have, you know, your meal ready to go, Mm -hmm. that might be worth it. So, Yep. yep. Any making things as efficient as possible. Mm -hmm. I think it's, is really key, you know, like you want to, you want things to be as easy as possible and not from a lazy, I don't want to do the work kind of thing. But if we, if, if our, our bar is set really high and we're trying to make changes to our life, well, I mean, we've all been there, right? This is, I mean, this is the typical approach, at least here in America is, do everything at once and do it perfectly. And then when you can't just, yeah, feel like a terrible yeah. person until you get the courage a year later to do it again. You know what I mean? Versus like, if we can, if we can set the bar of entry to these things lower, this mm-hmm. is how we build skills and tools, right? Mm-hmm. Like if I'm learning to play the guitar, well, am I going to play a cl- classical piece day one? Mm-hmm. It's like, no, I'm going to start with some really simple, doable things. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm going to, I'm going to do the easiest things first because that's what you need to do. And then I master those or get better at those. And then I can build on them, you know? And so it's just, it's just really important that we, we do make this doable because if it's a stressor in your life, I I tell clients this all the time, like the work we do together, one of my main goals is that is it is as little of a stressor as possible Mm -hmm. that what we do enriches and adds value to your life, right? Maybe a stressor and like, okay, I got to keep top of mind. I got to remember to do these things. But if it's a stressor of like, oh, I don't have time for this, I da, 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 then right, right from the start, we're in trouble. Yeah. You know, it, it needs to be something that, that feels like it sets you up for success and feels a hundred percent doable. Mm-hmm. Otherwise it's not going to stick around. And what a, what a great feeling if it is less than, you know, your capacity to handle things right? and you're like, geez, that was easy. Let's do more. more. I mean, Sweet. that's, that's a huge you know, boost in confidence and a feeling of empowerment and a can do sort of shift in energy. So, Mm -hmm. you know, if you do embark on some kind of meal planning or prep or menu planning, and you start going through it and you're like, 
man, this is actually way easier than I had anticipated. It's almost, and I've had people say it's too easy. This mm-hmm. is too easy, Aaron. And I'm like, well, just let's go wrong. with this. Yeah. Let's, let's Show go me. with this a little bit. Yeah, that's and what I tell people. Usually, mm-hmm, usually after a few weeks, it's becoming, there's something that they've noticed or realized they're like, Oh, this is where the challenge comes in. Or Mm -hmm. I just recognize this piece that actually is a, you know, tripwire for me. And so eventually the consistency will reveal where the challenges lie. Like if you can't be consistent with it, all of a sudden that's where, that's where you start seeing like, Oh, yeah. Yeah. And that's what I think people think a lot when we make some of these goals. It's like, it's too easy. Well, maybe it's too easy to do once, right. but is it, <laughs> is it too easy to do for 14 days in a row? Right. right. Like, like, you know, really, we're just going to do like, get a fruit and a vegetable each day. That's the plan for the next week. Like this mm-hmm. is, this is dumb. Prove me wrong. Prove yeah. yourself right. By, by, by doing it without any kind of issue you know, super easy, do it for the next week. Mm -hmm. And if you can do that, awesome. But there's a reason you haven't been doing this on a consistent basis, because it's not too easy. Now, Mm -hmm. maybe just like in theory, but for whatever your schedule, your environment, your awareness, your history, whatever, there's a reason that these things aren't happening. And if they're not happening, it's because there's a barrier. And so we need to figure that out, you know? Yeah. And I have, I have one more thing to add since we've talked Mm -hmm. a lot about include a fruit or vegetable, like that's been a theme today with planning your meals and your menus and including fruits and vegetables regularly. Even if you go out to eat and you get fast food or you order pizza or whatever, you go to your favorite barbecue place, there are vegetables and fruit to be had at those places. You Mm -hmm. have to look harder for them and you have to maybe overcome some of the temptation to just fall into your usual, like, you know, burger and fries habit. It doesn't mean that if you completely skip the fruits and vegetables, you failed or you're bad or anything, but I would invite people to really make that a normal part of building a meal, a good quality satisfying meal is include some color, some different Mm -hmm. textures, some different flavors that vegetables and fruit bring to the meal. And if, especially if you have little kids make that a normal part of how we eat, we always include, you know, a salad too, or you, you put the lettuce on the burger or you, whatever it is, try and just embrace that. That is a very normal, commonplace thing in menu yeah. planning and meal planning and yeah. see if just that simple mind shift can make a difference too. Yeah, absolutely. Completely agree. I so think you just, I think I, you just put a bow on this topic. I, did I put the cherry on you top? Did. Yep. You did. So but not, the, I, not the goop, cherry. not the goop cherry. <laughs> You've been if watching you us for a listened. while. You might get that. <laughs> If not, if, you, yeah. if not, maybe go back to episode. I don't even know what it was. It was the celebrity hacks. Celebrity. Decoded. Yeah. <laughs> so I hope that this episode was helpful and I hope it reveals that menu planning and meal prep and all that is not this glamorous curated, um, you know, thing that you see in here yeah. all over that it's, or even it a can massive be very undertaking. simple. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Really simple. Yeah, yep. Exactly. Simplify it set some goals, um, you know, reach out. I've, I've shared tons of recipes when people ask like, Oh, you mentioned this Mm -hmm. recipe. Can you send it to me? Yeah. We can, you know, help with that kind of stuff. Um, yeah. So let us know what you think. Comment on Instagram or send us an email at middleish at gmail.com. Yeah. Get planning. Yeah. Plan them meals, plan them snacks, those eating opportunities. Yeah. Happy eating. Do you have a meeting in the mundane? I do. So Matt and I went to Sun Valley this last weekend because we have Rebecca's private Idaho coming up on oh, Labor wow. Day. I feel like we were just talking about that. I know. And remember we had Rebecca Gosh, on a, last year yeah. to talk about, she did this amazing shift where, mm-hmm. you know, people weren't able to travel. And of course, Sun Valley had gotten hit really hard with the coronavirus when it first came out. And so, um, she decided to do sort of a DIY 
approach to Rebecca's private Idaho last year. And for me, it was a very special race and, Mm -hmm. um, my first gravel race and just, I love the energy and everything she's done. So anyway, just a little plug for RPI, you know, um, check her out on social media. She's got a really cool foundation called the be good foundation. And, Mm -hmm. um, so Matt and I go over there. Yeah. She's, she just has, um, loads of experience and really great life perspective and really good energy. And I just, I, I love that about her and her approach. So we go over there to ride the first stage of, um, the three day stage race I'm doing, and it's called the adventure stage and it has single track, but the catch is you want to, you have to ride the same bike for all three days of the stage race, but the other two days of the stage race are gravel road. And so it's way more efficient to have a gravel bike to ride those Mm. days, but you really wish you had a mountain bike for the first day. So you have a choice to make. You either ride your mountain bike the first day and enjoy that first day, but then you're slower and you don't have the right kind of bike for the other two days or you suck it up and you ride your gravel bike on the single track trails up there at Galena, which is really hard for me because I'm not, (laughs) I'm not good at it. And I thought that I would be so much better with my skills. I mean, I've come a long way in my mountain biking and I, that first day was just complete shit show. Like I just struggled the whole time. I couldn't ride certain parts that I thought I should be able to ride. My body wasn't responding well, like everything about it just really stunk. And so Matt, we had talked about, maybe we should do this loop twice. Maybe, you know, we kind of talked about what we were going to do the rest of the day. And at the end of the single track, he goes, okay, here's what I think we should do. (laughs) I think we should call it a day. We should go find a campsite and just chill out and unplug and just relax the rest of the evening. And then tomorrow we can come back and we can ride it again and you'll be fresh and you'll be well rested. And, you know, so I was like, okay, I'm on board with that. Well, the last few times we've gone camping, we've struggled finding a good campsite. Like it's just been Mm -hmm. so overrun with campers and people. And so we drive back into the Copper Basin and we're going quite a ways. I mean, it's like a good hour and a half from Galena. And so we have to drive all that back to go ride the next day. And I'm just like, oh, geez, I don't know if this is a great idea. We found the best little campsite just nice perched on over the river there. We had a little stream and we watched the moon rise. We, there was a meteor shower. And so we're just sitting there staring at the black sky, like waiting, waiting, waiting for meteors. Matt swears he saw one. I don't think I ever saw one, but it was, it was smoky too. So the, you know, the visibility wasn't great, but just to go from this one extreme in the day where I was having just such a rough time, not enjoying Mm -hmm. this. I mean, Matt even asked at one point, should we just go home? Like, is this even (laughs) worth it to flipping and having this just blissful little, and there was a trailer there when we first pulled into this area Mm -hmm. and they loaded up and left like an hour after we got there. So we had this whole little oasis to ourselves. It was just wonderful. And so to go from those two extremes, I think was just really, um, I appreciated that evening so much more because of the hard day I had had leading up to it. And it was a nice lesson just to remind myself that just because your day is going to shit early on, doesn't mean the whole day is going to go to shit. (laughs) So every day can be redeemed. So just, you know, keep, keep going and be gracious and find some solutions. And we did. And it was just, it was such a really nice evening and the next day was way better. So that nice. was mine. Yeah. That's a little awesome. life lesson there. A, a good camping spot is a real gem. Mm. Yes. Yeah, and the water running, I mean, just like oh. the water rushing through. And so we, that Amazing. night it was just white noise of water mm-hmm. running. Oh, it was lovely. Perfect. Yeah. That's mm-hmm. awesome. Love it. Oh, for me, um, mine is just last Sunday. So I, I love to cook. I really enjoy cooking, but I also like, I usually cooking is like, you know, like, okay, we got to get it going. Cause we got to have, you know, it's, it's something I, I always enjoy doing, but I rarely, or not as often as I would like, like think about in the moment, how much I enjoy doing it. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And so Sunday I was making lasagna which is, you know, that's a process. It takes a while to get all that made and ready to get in the oven, you know? And, um, the, the girls were, I don't know if they were gone or just doing stuff, but I was in the kitchen by myself for a while. And I just put on some music 
And I was just very aware for that, you know, hour or whatever, you know, cooking meat and making the cheese filling and noodles and building lasagna of just how much I enjoy this. Yeah. You know, I was just like really in the moment of like, ah, oh, these flavors are going to come together and all these distinct things are going to make one like, you know, distinct taste and flavor and experience. And I get at like, I'm not rushed. And this is, it was just this moment of really getting to enjoy something I always enjoy doing. I just, I don't often think about how much I enjoy it when I'm in the middle mm-hmm. of it. So it was just kind of, nice oh, I love yeah. it. And for those of you who are not watching and you're listening, I had this huge, ridiculous grin on my face the whole time Michael's <laughs> telling this story because it's, I can completely relate because mm-hmm. there's something very magical and fulfilling about creating this right. food experience, not just for yourself, but for your family and knowing, mm-hmm. knowing that it's nourishing your body and that it tastes good and that you made it like you put the work into it and this is what you created. And how cool yeah. is that? I mean, yeah, yep. I love it. Yep. Me too. So. Nice. Came. All right. Well, thanks everybody for, yeah. for listening. Um, as always, you know, we appreciate, you know, any support, whether that's just sharing the message of middle-ish by, you know, posting on your, um, your social media accounts or send it to a friend, um, rating, reviewing us, you know, you can always support us, um, uh, financially too, um, through, there's a link below, uh, for just listener support. There's a, a low, um, rate. That's a kind of a recurring monthly thing that you can support what we're doing here. And we appreciate that very much. Yes. And thank you to all of our current supporters and thank you for listening. Have a good one. <laughs>